This is Dr. Michael Tapper uh, reporting on behalf of an infectious disease advisor. I'm from the Northwell Hofstra School of Medicine and Lenox Hill Hospital in New York. And I'm joined today by Dr. Senu Abuwasu from the University of Cincinnati. He is the Director of Infectious Disease for the Transplant Program at the University of Cincinnati. And he, Senu just gave a very interesting talk about the uh, renal transplantation and HIV infected person. So I, let me turn it over to you and ask you to tell us a little bit about your findings. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about uh, our work. So what we, what we wanted to do was, um, first of all, to um, look at outcomes of renal transplantation in HIV-positive patients. As you know, um, the uh, HIV infection was an absolute contraindication for transplantation in, in the early art and the early um, era of HIV. Um, and that was probably justified because um, the life expectancy of HIV patients was very short and um, the earlier studies that looked at um, outcomes of transplantation in HIV patients showed very dismal outcomes. But with advancement of uh, antiretroviral therapy, um, the life expectancy of an HIV patient is relatively very, um, it's expected to be comparable to HIV negative people. And um, subsequent um, efforts at transplanting HIV positive patients have revealed outcomes that are very comparable to HIV negative individuals. And so based on that, I think the field has changed and the paradigm has changed. And um, it's time to um, not just document the efficacy, but document effectiveness, document the real life, um, the real world um, outcomes of HIV transplantation, um, not just in the clinical trial setting or in a, an academic center, but you know when a community hospital does this, what are the outcomes? And um, in, uh, unfortunately, one would say that we still there's still some uh, there's still some reluctance to transplant HIV positive patients based on their you know the area legislature and um, the outcomes that were the poor outcomes that I described earlier. And so we coined the term HIV transplantation inertia, which represents the reluctance of you know an individual or an, an organization to transplant an HIV positive patient. Um, and we our goal then was to try and um, come up with data or information that can help overcome HIV transmutation inertia. So our, our study um, um, had the objective to document the effectiveness and document the um, fiscal outcomes of these um, interventions, hopefully to support an argument to um, overcome transmutation inertia. And what were your conclusions? So it was very interesting. We, um, we used the HCUP database, which is a national um, largely the largest publicly available database of, of, um, of uh, hospital admissions in the US um, and we came we extracted about a hundred and five thousand patients who had transplantation of which about 605 were HIV positive and you know as you would expect in any HIV population you know the characteristics include a more African Americans were HIV positive um, low-income um, individuals were HIV positives um, and then um, what we found was, and we, we looked at the, the basic characteristics were, were similar to what one would expect within an HIV population. And one of the outcomes we, look, we looked at were hospital stay, infection rates, mortality, and, um, and cost of stay. When regards to hospital stay, they were very comparable between HIV positive and HIV negative. Right. Mortality was also very comparable. We also looked at infection rates, which were also very comparable. What was slightly, there was a trend towards slight um, significance was rejection. It seems to be that there was a trend towards more rejection in the HIV positive mm -hmm. individuals than HIV negative individuals. Um, we obviously were all on, on antiretroviral therapy. Yes, and all, yes, most of, well, our data did not capture the antiretroviral therapy, yeah. but that usually is a, it's a, um, it's, yeah, it's a, it's really, it's, a condition for transplantation. You have to have your uh, be on antiretroviral therapy with a controlled viral load and CD4 count before you get legible or listed. So in, in, in summary, what we found was that it looks like the outcomes are, the clinical outcomes are quite comparable and even the economic outcomes or physical outcomes are very comparable. Um, and that pretty much summarizes our work. And so we think that that would be um, arguments to support um, 
uh, any um, efforts to overcome um, HIV transportation inertia. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.